So I've hiked up to the top of this ridge. We're going to set up camp, spend the night, and enjoy the view. So I'm just breaking some of these branches to this rock here and I figure I'm going to put my tarp in this area, put my fire pit here so I just want to make sure there's nothing, all this stuff is bone dry, I just want to make sure there's nothing above my fire that might potentially catch. So I'm just going to break a couple of those back, that should be fine. Then clear some of this. Alrighty then, they're making a new Ace Ventura aren't they, apparently, that's what I saw, it'll be pretty good, hopefully, I enjoyed them when I was a kid anyway, um, yeah I got my three poles, basically what I'm going to do, I'm on top of this ridge, and obviously this side's not so bad, it's pretty, um, there's some rocks and stuff there, there's a lot, there's quite a bit of breeze coming in off here, it's supposed to be cold tonight, about 34 degrees right around freezing and I don't want the wind whipping in this way so I'm going to do a three-sided tarp shelter use these poles as my framework but for right now I've got to lash them together so that's what I'm going to do Okay, well as you can see, or as you can probably realize, the ground under here 
is just all solid rock so digging in some stakes wouldn't really do me anything because they wouldn't they'd be too shallow and I, there are some rocks around but I want to use those to build a fire pit so what I've done is I've just taken two logs the length of my ridge pole and just simply stuff the tarp on underneath them sorry put those over the tarp and it's created a nice little shelter for me if it gets windy in the next couple of hours and this isn't the tarp's not staying where I want it to I can always gather up some rocks and put them on as well for a bit of extra protection once I built my fire pits up but that's what we're going to do now so we're going to clear a spot and then like I say gather some rocks and build this pit Oh. Well, as cool as it is, camping up on the ridge top, got a nice little view out there. Be great if you could just do a little bit of clearing, you have an excellent view. But the only problem is, water's down in the valley. I know it doesn't look that steep from up here because it sort of grades a little bit, but once you get beyond there, it cliffs out. So I had to go down and around and work my way down just to get water. So. That's not ideal, but brought the analogy in, so I got a good litre and a half on board, which is good. And now I just gotta get firewood and cook some food, which nice being up here because there's a lot, a lot of firewood around me. A lot. So what we're gonna do. Well, look at that for a natural check, would you? Beautiful. Beautiful. No more than 10 yards from camp. You can see just how solid that wood is. In that check. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I had someone ask me on a previous video. My, uh, the one I did in the old, um, canvas tent. Why? use a knife to split wood when I have my axe and honestly uh, it all depends on the piece of wood but with stuff this size with and it with such a great check in it that's already splitting I just find that the knife's just a little bit more controlled you know, bit, bit. Uh, for bigger pieces I would use my axe, but my axe is a 19 inch handle. So it's quite long, so it's not the easiest thing to like use because it's got quite a long handle on something this small. Like I say, if it was something bigger and I'd set up a working log and, you know, give it a good whack. But with this, I say with these shorter pieces, they're only about wrist thick forearm thickness it's just a bit more controlled with the old baton even though this stuff is 
dent. This stuff is really dense. It's super dry. I was honestly expecting it with a check like that. A lot of times if it has a really good check in it, I mean, that is so dry. If it has a really good check in it, you give it a couple taps with the baton and it just splits super easy. So probably not the best example. Say, so, well, don't need to use your ax, just use your knife. And then it doesn't want to play along. That's typical. Typical. Oh, yes, staking it up. Well, what is it Forrest Gump says? I am not a smart man. And that's about it. That's about the only <laughs> bit that, apply, that applies to me because I am not a smart man I just got my drone back enjoy the drone footage because I just sent it a million miles an hour into a tree crashing to the ground and absolutely obliterated it and I'm pretty sure this is the first trip I've used it since I got it back from being repaired so <laughs> cheers it says I, I bought this because it was cheap it's like I think this was like 12 bucks Howl ahead, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey with natural banana flavor. Banana, banana flavor. Bananas gone crazy. Yeah, that's right. We said bananas. <laughs> Blended with the finest Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey we could get our paws on. You've got a kick of oak, a will of sweetness, and some straight from the jungle banana rama goodness. Okay, sounds like a party. Well, cheers, guys. That's not the worst thing I've ever had, actually. That's quite nice. That's quite nice. It's not, I mean, it's not like a bourbon bourbon, and it's not, it's only 80 proof, which is, which is a lot. 80 proof is a lot, but it's very sweet, and you can taste the banana. Surprisingly, with all that banana rama goodness in there, you can actually taste it, and it's quite nice. It'd be nice. <sighs> I know that's so jarring, that's so jarring when you're in the woods and you're watching these videos and then all of a sudden you hear my phone go off, gives you like PTSD of having to wake up in the morning but I always find if I time my steak then I don't overcook it, you know, if I give it five minutes, flip it five minutes, then it should be about good, so that's what we're going to do, oh, put the poles on you. Well, that end's not cooked. The middle's getting nice and cooked. Well, this coal's not that hot. Don't burn yourself, Nia. Don't burn yourself, Nia. Let's bring you in a bit closer, just add a bit more flambe. Flambe avec le me. Sorry about that. I don't, I don't really camp on places like this. 
very often because a it's easier to get water if you're down by a lake or a, a river but also from what i know about bears is this is kind of like where bears like to hang out sort of deal so hopefully we don't run into one we'll see but i fingers crossed i i know they're probably more scared of me or you know no, they're not. They're definitely not more scared of me. I'm more scared of them, but I think they'll leave me well enough alone. Um, what was I going to say before I got so rudely interrupted? Oh, soft white underbelly. It's my new obsession. If you haven't seen it, search it on YouTube. It's a guy called Mark Leiter, and I guess he just, like, he was a photographer, or he is a photographer, and he's photographed all these people over the years, and then he's like, does video interviews with them. But he just interviews, like, you know, prostitutes and heroin addicts and crack addicts and sex offenders and all these like, you know, wild, wild stories. Uh, but it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. He does. He actually interviews a lot of people from Appalachia and like Eastern Kentucky. That's what reminded me. That's what made me think of it with the whiskey. But it's interesting. It's just interesting from because there's a lot of people from the same same places and or people with the similar addictions and things like that and they all have you know very different stories or some of them have exactly the same story if you know what i mean like it's just interesting it's interesting so if anyone enjoys that sort of thing give it a watch i've watched so many of them in the last couple of weeks whilst i haven't been able to be out in the woods <laughs> so but yeah i'm gonna gonna Take a look at this steak and then hopefully get it in my belly. It's turning out to be a very nice evening. Precarious. Oh, she's overdone. She's overcooked. Oh well. Wow, that moon is so bright. So bright, just a massive full moon. It's crazy. It got dark for like a minute, five minutes, and then all of a sudden my eyes adjusted, and it's just like everything is, well, everything's just lit up by the moon. Like it's not even dark, really. It's crazy, I know it looks pretty dark in the camera, but in my eyes it's not even that dark so. uh, but yeah anyway I've just been relaxing chilling out it's been a beautiful evening fire's nice and warm that fire pit is doing wonders keeping all the heat directed towards me I'm just gonna hang out for a little bit and then go to sleep so I'll catch you guys in the morning hopefully nothing goes 
bump in the night. Well, good morning. I didn't think to get water last night for coffee this morning. I don't want to have to climb all the way down there. So again with the little awake caramel chocolate bikes. To start the day, you check out the, the anti-bear bars that I, that I added to the shelter. Some things have crash bars and anti-roll bars. Shelters get anti-bear bars. <laughs> Even though it's not gonna do much to stop a hungry bear, but when you're sleeping with your head sticking out this end, it's nice to have something that's just gonna like divert around, you know what I mean? It's something to add a little bit of obstruction to whatever might wanna come and get him in, into bed with you. So. Yeah, apart from that, I slept pretty good. I didn't even get up to light the fire, although I sat in front of it for quite a long time. After I turned the camera off. I have to say, man, I know they sent them to me, but these dry bags are from AquaQuest, these new ones that I got, have been a revelation, because like last night, this is the one I put my sleeping bag in. This is a 30 litre, but last night I was sat on this but the ground's wet and I was wanted to lay. But when I laid, all my, my legs were getting wet. So I just put this out there and it extended my little sit pad platform. Kept my legs dry, which was nice. And then the 10 litre one, I'm loving because like I say, it's perfect pillow size. I have a pillow. I use my inflatable pillow, but at home I always have two pillows. And I either sl I sleep with one and then I either hold one like this or I put it between my legs. So this has worked out great for that. Plus it keeps my clothes dry and, you know, when I put them in my bottom of my sleeping bag now, they're nice and organized, which is nice. And I get an extra pillow out of it, so pretty good. But yeah, I slept good actually. I slept pretty well. I didn't, I seem to wake up on the hour, every hour, mainly because my shoulder hurt, but, and it's pretty sore this morning. But hopefully go and stretch it out and it'll feel better. But yeah, apart from that, like I said, I don't want to have to walk all the way down that hill to get water to come back up to have coffee and then you know walk all the way back down there so uh my plan is just to eat this maybe munch on my my breakfast bar and then i'm packing up and i'm heading home so if you like this give it a like subscribe if you haven't already and as always i'll see you on the next one take it Thank you.